Today with Unit 4 Language and Power and in Unit 4 we are talking about language exactly but today we are gonna go to reading too so if you can open your textbook for reading and writing at page 83 here we go the question of global English look at the bold-faced words in the reading on the next page and think about the questions number one which words or phrases do you know the meaning of and number two can you use any of the words or phrases in a sentence? Now, I'd like you to stop, pause your video right now and think about that. Try to answer so in our next Zoom meeting we can talk about this. Go ahead. Now, this brings us to number two. Read the traveling man blog written by a traveler who is interested in different languages and cultures. Okay, that is this one. Of course, before you do this, I would like you to uh, use the reading strategies. So first you preview the text, right? To get the text type and the purpose by looking at the title and the headings and the pictures. It sets the focus. Then you skim through the text by reading the introductory paragraph and every topic sentence to get the main idea. And then you will read the whole text actively by annotating every main point and then after that you go to your questions analyzing them to answer okay i'm gonna give you a little bit of time to do that go ahead okay as you can see this is a um, interview, an interview, um, traveling man, Jason C. July 17. Let's listen. The question of global English. Traveling man, Jason C. July 17th. Hello, fellow travelers. I'm on my way to France through the Spanish Basque country. Last night I saw a big sign at a cafe reading English spoken here. It got me thinking, is English as a global language helping people around the world to communicate better? Or is it causing us to lose our uniqueness and independence? Is it fair to have one powerful language that people around the world have to learn? John L. As an American, I like it. I can talk to people wherever I go, and I don't have to learn any other languages. At the same time, I sometimes feel embarrassed when I compare myself to people who know English plus two or three other languages. I feel so stupid sometimes. Miguel F. Using English as a global language makes sense to me. It's convenient for us to have a common language. They tried Esperanto, but that didn't spread like English. Language can't be created or forced. It's a natural expression of a culture. As an invented language, Esperanto doesn't have any native culture. Jason C. What's Esperanto? Isn't that some kind of spy language from World War II? Miguel F. Earlier than that, it goes back to the 1880s. A scholar invented it to give people a common language they could all learn easily. He felt that having different languages divides people into enemy groups. He hoped that Esperanto would change things. Yi Wen Si. But the grammar of Esperanto is based on European languages, so it's not that easy for non Europeans to learn. Besides, it's not as cool as speaking English. English is more than a language, it's an attitude, a lifestyle. It's Hollywood, rock and roll.
the silly Z. It's all political. Whoever wins a war gets to control the language of the world. But I do agree that it's easier for people to have a common language. So why not English? It's a simple language. If it weren't that easy, how could a billion people around the world have learned it? You go H. I don't think it's easy at all. It's taken me years to learn it. Paolo B. I agree. I hate how the spelling's so complicated, so full of exceptions. Ashok P. I like that it has so many dialects. You don't have to speak like any one nationality. You have choices. Ali M. For me, it was easy to learn English at school in Qatar since I went to an English-speaking school. Now my English is almost perfect, and I started young, so it wasn't too hard to learn. You go H. I wish I had perfect English. I'm not even close. There's so much slang and so many synonyms. It gives me a headache. And why are there so many verb tenses? Do we really need to know the past perfect? Give me Esperanto. Gorka A. Try learning Basque if you want a real challenge. English is so much easier. Jason C. I'm not so sure now. Thanks for sharing your ideas. I'll post again as soon as I get to France. Okay, great. That brings us to the comprehension. True or false? What about the statements? Number one, two, three, four, five. Are these statements true or false? Now you can. Uh, what I want you to do is to um, annotate the sentences on the keywords and then go back to the text to scan through the text to find whether they are true or false. You can pause your video to do that. Go ahead. Awesome. That brings us to the reading scale. In reading too, people express their opinions about English as a global language. A strong reader is able to understand how examples are used to support opinions. Yeah, English is not only a language for one country anymore. We have all sorts of English. That's why it's called a global language, which is spoken by many people from many different countries. Now, today we're going to look at understanding how examples support opinions. Remember P and P? P is your main point, the first E is your explanation, giving reasons, and then the second E is the example, and then you do that again with the second main point and with the third main point, and then the L, the linking, goes linking back to the topic sentence, right? Okay, writers sometimes present a variety of opinions in a text. Readers need to understand how different examples support different opinions, how are they connected and correlated. Here you have the examples. For instance, opinion one, Tannen agrees that women speak more politely and less directly than men. Example one, for instance, instead of ordering someone directly to open the door, a woman will often use a polite question such as, could you please open the door? Opinion two, Paul looks at female speech as a way of building relationships with other people. Example two, women chat about their lives share common feelings, and help each other emotionally. Again, it is important to read examples carefully and think about their meaning. Remember that the purpose of an example is to support the main idea. So you have the point made, which is mostly your main point, which can be an opinion or just another fact. That is then explained by the usage of reasons and then an example. The example is your evidence. Great, now let's try it out here. Work together, now in this case you do this on your own. Read each opinion from reading two, these are the opinions, and then match the opinion with a supporting example. For example, number one, as an American, I like global English, which is uh, supported by C. Speakers of English don't have to learn other languages. Yeah. 
Now I want you to answer number two, three, four, five, and six. Connect to opinion with the supporting example it fits with. Go ahead. Cool, that brings us to the part of connecting the readings where we're basically looking at reading one and reading two. Now reading one, you read by yourself. There was no video for that one, remember? But you got to read it. So we're gonna connect reading one and reading two. Both contain information about the relationship between language and power. Now look at the list of beginning statements and write each one under the correct heading in the chart. Then you complete each statement with important information for reading one and two. So we've got A, B, C, D, E, and F. What is it to do with that? You're gonna place these under the correct heading in the chart. This is the chart, language and gender, that's reading one. And then English is a global language, which comes from reading two, text two. Now I want you to place the correct heading in the correct column, which fits where. Pause your video to do that. Go ahead. Awesome. That brings us to uh, synthesizing. And as you know, synthesizing is a strategy where we connect and correlate different factors, components, material, ideas, combining it together in order to create something new. Now for synthesizing in this matter, we're connecting factors from reading one to the factors of reading two in order to create something. In this case, you imagine that you're writing a paragraph in a linguistics class, I meets mean, a language class. Now you're gonna complete a paragraph outline with information from step one. And step one, what was that again? This one. Remember this information? which went into this table. Now, so you're gonna use the information from step one, yeah? And then use the outline to write the complete paragraph. So you're going to put that information into these blanks and make the complete outline. Okay, you're going to pause the video to do this, go ahead. Awesome beans, great job. And then basically using this outline, um, this will guide you and help you to write the complete paragraph because we always write a paragraph based on an outline, very good, which has a topic sentence and then the supporting point, which is your first main point, which has details is the P, the E, the E, and then the E the explanation and the example, and then the next main point, P-E-E, -E, and then you can have another point, P-E-E, -E, and then the concluding sentence is the L, which links back all the way to the topic sentence. Cool beans, you did a great job. That is it for today. Please make sure that you understand the concept of the reading strategies, previewing, skimming, active reading, question analysis, scanning to find the answer, and remember that you need to understand the outline of the topic and how we have the topic sentence. P, P, peel, L is the concluding sentence. Okay, now, so that was all for today. Basically, uh, that is what we did today and we focused on our um, vocabulary. Yeah, the vocabulary um, in context. Yeah the vocabulary that we found in context. And uh, the vocabulary is basically what we could find within the text itself. But today we were more focused actually on, um, on the main ideas. So for today's lesson, the bold faced words, the vocabulary was for you to figure out which words you already understand and which you don't understand and which you then basically can look up and figure out what it means. Yeah. And if you need to find that also out in Bahasa Indonesia, you can add that to it. And then we went to the comprehension, whether the statements were true or false. We went over the reading skill, understanding how examples support opinions. And that goes to our P, point, explanation, which are reasons, examples. And peel, point, explanation, examples, and linking back. Very good. Awesome. You did a great job. I will see you very soon. God bless you. Bye.